Pop and Positivity <laughs> Podcast. Welcome, Ellie Golding. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be and here. Of course, we're here in Chicago as well, 1035 Kiss FM, which if you listen tonight at around uh, 6.50 uh, Central Time, you'll hear a song uh, called Easy Lover. Just, just throwing that out there tonight. So. Hey, that's my song. That's your, that, that, that is your song. So Whitney Reynolds is also here. Um, we'll get into the song in a minute, but man, a lot has changed since the last time in your life that we hung at Jingle Ball here in Chicago. I don't even know what year that was. That was probably like 2017, maybe. Oh my God. Like, oh. like five years feels like 500, right? Yes, it's, I don't know. It feels like this This past few years have gone really quickly, but also very weirdly slowly at the same time. I don't even know how that makes any sense, but um, not, yeah, not, the whole lockdown period just was so mad. I mean, we had, I don't know what you guys have, but we had like proper like lockdowns where we could only go for like one walk a day and it was just so surreal. Um, and I was doing like performances from the bathroom I released an album. It was like the worst timing ever, but I really wanted to release it. Um, and, you know, I it would have got to a point where I just wouldn't have wanted to release it anymore. So I'm just glad I did it at the time. Yeah, but um, yeah, God, it was strange. Oh, and then I and then I had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Minor detail, a baby. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> um, but I don't, I mean, look, it, it was, I wasn't planning on it, which I'm really open about. Um, but, you know, it happened and it's a, it's a blessing. It's a true blessing. Amazing. Well, I am a mom. I'm a mom of twins. And so I consider it beautiful chaos all the time. Yeah. The rest here, especially when you're working, how have you navigated like being the superstar you are and now also having the new title as mom? Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to just like balance it all out. Um, I brought him to the studio a few times. I, I got back to the studio pretty soon after I, I had him just as a kind of, I think I would just went into just like crazy mode, like survival mode. I wanted to just keep working. And I was in the studio a lot when I was pregnant as well, because I, there was a studio about an hour down the road from me. So I could just drive there and it was kind of perfect. So I felt like I could still be at my most creative self, even when I was, you know, tired. And I figured out I could just, if I could just sit there and eat that, you know, then all was well, um, which I could do. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is, it's definitely like you're suddenly factoring in something huge. It's not like before where you just got, you're just free, you know, you, 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 and I never, I thought, got it, you know, I'll oh, maybe I'll get, I'll get help and I'll get someone to just be there with me, but it's not the same, you know, you, you want, you want to actually be there for them. You want to, uh, you know, uh, see them all the time. I never even thought about that. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure it out all the time, but um, have yeah. you, have you been, I mean, I don't know what age you knew you could sing, but are you already kind of listening to like the cry that you're like, is, are my jeans passed down? Are you going to be a singer or a young man? I am. I am actually, because <laughs> sometimes like he makes like certain like noises. I'm like, oh, oh, that could be something. Um, but I don't know. I think he's, I think he does actually have a bit of the, the sync, the sort of music gene. He loves music. He really, you can tell he really picks up on it. Um, and um, I mean, my husband is like complete, like opposite of me in every single way. So it will be interesting to see what he comes out, uh, out as the most. But um, hopefully he's got my husband's brains because he's very, very smart. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Well, let's talk about the music. I'm sure uh, your son loves Easy Lover, probably on repeat right now, the Golding household, right? So um, <laughs> yeah. congratulations on this track. First of all, um, I'm sure you're a fan, but as soon as I saw the song title, it took me back to my personal favorite Phil Collins song ever. And we have this debate that Easy Lover is actually not a Phil Collins song. It's a Philip Bailey song featuring Phil Collins or it's a duet or one or the other. Oh. So my friends so my friends kind of shit on me. They're like, that's not a real Phil Collins song. You can't, you can't call that. Phil but anyways, Collins. long story short. Song. Yeah. yeah, great title with the big Sean feature, heard it immediately, put a smile on my face. And that's what kind of, kind of what the world needs. Um, yeah. So congratulations on the song. Thank you. Um, big Sean is going to be here in Chicago at the end of the month for Lollapalooza. Hey. Just, just wondering what your plans are. I've already been asked about this, you know, because Kai goes playing as well. And oh. yeah, <laughs> no, I've been yeah asked about that. Um, so I don't know. I'll see. I, I think I actually am free at the end of the month. Um, but I, yeah, I have to figure some things out, but maybe, maybe. That'd we'll be very it. cool if we could sing Easy Lover. That'd be very cool. Hell yeah. 
I, I, I'm worried that no one will know it but by then. It's oh, no. Oh, please. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, no. Nobody will no, know. No. It. No. But you never know. Like, it's so crazy. The craziest thing that happened to me recently with the festival is I played um, this song, Still Falling For You. Yeah. And it, honestly, every single person was singing along. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how? Because... The song wasn't like, you know, it was, I remember it being like number one on radio, but I don't remember it being like a, one of those songs that was like viral, that was like big, that, you know, everyone knew. And now everyone knows it because of TikTok, because it blew up on TikTok and it's like the soundtrack, the background of so many like emotional videos, like people getting married or like people coming back from the art, like military or I don't know. So, so that, that's just, that's just crazy because it just shows the power of TikTok. Well, and speaking of being a big fan of your music, you were actually my husband's and I's wedding song. We really? did your song at our wedding. Ah. Yeah. And, and so like just hearing you or talking with you now, it's very full circle, very full circle. Yeah. Oh, you, wow. That's so cool. You are making memories in so many people's lives through your music. So that's the interesting thing. You put out something and you really don't even know the full impact of all, like you said, the military videos, you know, this people are using your music in great ways too I know. that can make gives me so much joy it makes me you know that's why I do what I do and it just makes me feel so like rewarded and oh yeah it's just the best I love it I'm so lucky album number five in the works are we how close are we and what's the vibe gonna be well the album's pretty much done I just need to decide what's gonna go on it you know the songs are all there it's it's just a very upbeat dance electronic album it's it's very upbeat and but, you know, it's still a pop album. It's not like a sort of left field dance album. It's, but I'm working with some of my favorite producers and it's, it's, yeah, it's catchy. It's fun. It's like, you know, when Beyonce brought out Break My Soul, I was like, good. I feel like I'm on a similar, you know, I just want to bring out sort of upbeat music. And um, I think we all need it at the moment. And same with Drake, you know, he's like clearly on that, on the same page as well. So I feel like I'm in good company. Yeah, the upbeat is so amazing. And the video itself, like I was watching it, I'm like, the art, the artsy side of it all, it, I mean, it's really hitting a lot of different things in that video. I love it. Yes. Did you help? Yeah. Was that your idea? It was kind of between me and I have this very um, awesome creative director, Nathan, and we worked together. We worked together for years, but uh, he, him and I decided that we wanted something that was very kind of surreal, um, not, you know, not necessarily based on reality. And also just me being able to play different characters. And, you know, I feel like we all feel like we're in a kind of video game that's glitched at the moment with mad stuff going on in the world. So I guess it's part of that. But also I I love that it's just, you know, you couldn't ever place where a character is from or what era or, you know, it's completely androgynous. And and I love that. Um, And so I think maybe that's a theme that will carry on throughout the album campaign, throughout the tour. I just love playing these different characters, like these alter egos. So it's, it's like breath of fresh air for me to just like dress as other people and be other things and, and have these like different characters. So I loved it. You were my, you were my ninth grade history teacher drinking out of the flask at that, oh, one, yeah. that one part. I was like, that's Mr. Opalowski right there. And I think we probably <laughs> all had a Mr. Opalowski. Yeah. Do you own a flask? Real question. I do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a very English thing. It's a very English thing. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, you know what? I've seen so many American movies where they have those flasks, but it's a very like when you, when you go on like a, not that I ever would, but they always have like shooting weekends and things. And you go on like pigeon, uh, clay pigeon shooting. So they shoot fake stuff, um, which is much nicer, obviously. But yeah, and they've all, then they, they carry their little like uh, flasks in their, in their pockets. Um, Cause it's, it's all, yeah, it's all about having a cheeky like drink before the, I don't know. Uh, that sounds so English, but that's basically. <laughs> it what's does sound so an, English. <laughs> what's, an, what's an Ellie Gold, what is in Ellie Golding's flask most of the time? That's the question. See, I'm not, I find it really hard to have like straight spirits. So oh, if I was really pushing it, it'd be tequila. Mm. Yeah, we messed yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be like vodka or gin. Oh, no way. So it would have to be tequila <laughs> and not whiskey. Sorry, I'm not a whiskey person at all. 
Well, I want to switch gears just a little bit because on the podcast, we talk about the good that our guests are doing too. So of course we have this rocking song. I mean, I I hope you come at the end of the month because you know, everybody will know it and we'll be singing along with you and Brady and I want to be front row, but going about the good you're doing, you are a philanthropist as well. And I think sometimes when you are on this limelight, people know you for the music, but I want our listeners to know the good that you're doing for the world too. So what is one of the organizations that you're proudest to work with? Hmm. Um, Okay, so I do a lot of environmental activism. Uh, I've worked with the UN uh, environmental program for the past four or five years now. Uh, I also just most recently became a WWF ambassador. Um, I also support a bunch of other um, um, charities um, specifically to do with the environment. Um, I basically believe that we all have to appreciate being... um, uh, I suppose, borrowing this planet, you know, for, to, to live on. And um, obviously we're all realizing more recently that um, climate change is becoming a huge um, problem and it's, it's like a climate emergency and um, it's gonna be responsible for a lot of um, people suffering and a lot of biodiversity loss, um, losing glaciers, which then rising sea levels, and then you affect the whole ocean and things start dying, coral starts dying. Um, so it just, it basically like these, these systems that we have on our planet that we all use um, and take advantage of to survive and to live the lives that we do, uh, they're being destroyed, completely destroyed. and. Um, and I feel like I am an activist for it, but I think we all have to be at this point. And uh, it's not like I'm an eco warrior or a tree hugger or someone that just loves the natural world. I think we all have to at this point um, be be people that respect um, the planet and also just keep shouting loud to, to you know those corporations and those politicians and those powers that be that can really make those changes, make those policy changes. Um, and also the biggest, most important thing is, is we have to um, find a way to switch to completely to renewable energy. Um, so finding jobs in, sorry, getting quite serious, but finding more jobs in, in green energy rather than going back to like fossil fuels. It's just like they have to stay in the ground from now on. If we're going to do anything about climate change, if we're, you know, at this point, it's not about stopping it. It's just about um, mitigating it and, um, and slowing it down. Um, and you know so happening. much about it. That's what I think is remarkable. I was reading about all the different stuff you are involved with. And I knew that was one of your passions and you know a lot about it. Well, I mean, I'm not a scientist, but it doesn't take a scientist to, 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 to understand the science. Actually, it's very simple science that Earth is, is warming up um, quite considerably and very quickly. And uh, we need to slow it down if we're going to have uh, a comfortable way of living for the next however many years. No, love that you're using your voice, your platform. You know, there needs to be more artists, quite frankly, that do that. We try and do it here, but we're just a small little speck in the whole grand scheme of things. But I, I don't know any other like artists other than Coldplay. Coldplay, Coldplay. I, I, I spoke recently at that Billy Eilish's um, overheated event in London. Um, she's doing amazing things for it. Um, so big up to her. Um, but yeah, we definitely need more artists to get on board. So if you're an artist or, you know, or you're a fan of an artist that's listening to this, then please uh, give them a little nod. I mean, push. Yeah. Last, no one, <laughs> last one for me and love you so much for, for taking time and, and chatting with us um, since it is so hot everywhere in the world right now. I probably, it's probably a million degrees where you're at. Um, yeah. what, what is Ellie Golding's go-to ice cream flavor? <laughs> or hitting stuff. Um... You know what? I'm a mint chocolate chip girl, and I, I think it's controversial. That's great. Why is it con- controversial? Okay, like caramel or like I don't know, fudge or like Oreo or something. I just went straight for chocolate chip. No one I know likes cho- mint chocolate chip, but I just do. For some reason, it's just my thing. It's just my more, thing. More for you. That's a great. Well, one. <laughs> Good. And before we go, we ask every guest on the show, "What do you want your legacy to be?" And so, Ellie, what do you want it to be? Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, I mean, I would love to know that, I, that, that my, my activism has really made a difference and I, I hope that it does and is, um, but also, you know, with, like you said, with my songs, I, I, I mean, the idea that I've just made a difference in people's lives with, with weddings and births and, um, they, all those life occasions that, that we all, that we all need and, and all have. And, um, I love that I can be a part of that. And so, yeah, the idea, I, I mean, I don't really know like this, a straight answer to that, but to, to know that I've like had a positive impact 
um, on people's lives and to know that I've made my mark, you know, in, in, in a, in a really, um, sort of positive way, then that would be lovely. Mm-hmm. You're so good. One last thing, David, come say hi. Your biggest fan is in my room right now. My hey. husband, my hi. husband adores you. And whenever oh, I, was nice him, meet you. I was like, he, you love Ellie more than me, don't you? It was, a, it was a thing. It was a true thing. <laughs> really? Oh my God. I hope it's still a thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. It still is a thing. But mm-hmm. so uh, our wedding song, I told her. It, was, it was just such a uh, memorable part of our life. And you were actually a part of it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love yeah. that, guys. Thank you. That's so That's sweet. sweet. I'll tell you yeah. what, this is like oh, when, when, <laughs> when, when when Whitney and I came up with this podcast, this is the exact type of interview that we, we were envisioning. So I just want to thank you for all the stuff you do. Uh, with your music and of course uh, the stuff that's outside of music and congratulations on being a mom we'll see you at the end of the month at Lollapalooza thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys loads of love right, see, see you soon bye, bye.